This video is sponsored by no one. There is one item in this video that was provided to me for a review, but on their sales platform, not on YouTube. I received no compensation for mentioning that product in this video, everything else I have purchased. Previously, I'd not thought of my computer hobby as a home lab, but I'm beginning to think of it that way. Especially since starting to play with PFSense. I actually tried it out on two other machines before deciding to use the HP Elite Desk. The week or so it ran without the CPU cooling fan showed this i7-6700 might be a little overkill. Power consumption wasn't terrible at 17 watts, but that still didn't seem low enough. Adding to where it was going to go, I opted for something a little smaller while adding some managed switches. Since the day I left dial-up behind, my network topology has been a mess but rather flat. The biggest things to happen in my home network since then was Gigabit Ethernet and Wi-Fi through many versions since 802.11b. I thought of network segmentation but never really got around to it. I also had never set up a guest Wi-Fi network. Since sitting for and passing the CompTIA Security Plus exam this summer, I've thought more about it. When I picked up a Nook from a Chinese company, I decided to treat that with a little more scrutiny. In the end, I wiped the OS and I did a fresh install and I haven't found anything out of place since then, but the firewall was there and I wanted to play with VLANs. I've since decided to change everything about my network and turn my whole house into a lab. I decided for my PFSense computer I'd try at the previously reviewed Bytenuk AK34. It is running an Intel Celeron N3450 and with its dual gigabit NICs it seemed a good fit. It also pulls about 5 watts at idle and tops out around 10, so that was quite an improvement over the larger HP machine. It is also a lot smaller, but a trade-off on not having expansion for network segmentation. So I created a bunch of VLANs and run it to a Netgear GS108E smart switch. I'm really only going to use 4 of the ports on it now. Port 1 is the uplink, with all VLANs running through there tagged. Then I have two different VLANs attached to two other ports, one going to an 8-port unmanaged switch with my Raspberry Pis and my backup server, and the other running to an 8-port unmanaged switch in my office. Except that is where I'm playing with suspicious computers, so I'm running a couple of VLANs that way and using a TP-Link TLSG105E smart switch to handle those. Another big upgrade is the Wi-Fi. No more using the cable company's all-in-one as the access point. I'm setting up a TP-Link Umada EAP610. I went with this one because it can assign up to 8 SSIDs on each Wi-Fi radio and they can be tied to different VLANs. It can also be part of a mesh network, which could become important later. While most videos I've seen on it use a centralized management device, I'm just going to configure this one over the built-in web console. It also supports PoE+, so I'm going to use a PoE injector to power it. It took most of the day, but I finally got it all set up and running. Three of my Raspberry Pis were the main hurdle. They all had static IPs set, and I didn't go in and change them to DHCP before cutting over to the new server VLAN. I brought them in here one by one and got things changed over, but one of them just refused to let me connect. After nearly an hour, I figured it out. IP tables was running on it, and it wouldn't allow connections from the new subnet. I had to hook that one up to a monitor to fix it. I made the change on the sole Raspberry Pi that operates over Wi-Fi before switching that one over. I also had issues with the TP-Link switch. The main one turned out to be a misconfiguration on the Netgear one. I simply had to change that port from untagged to tagged in the 802.1Q VLAN settings, and then it worked. I also had connection issues with port 5, but after doing a factory reset, everything was working again. Once set up, the system ran great for about a day. The Wi-Fi cut out, and nothing I could do could get it to come back online. The wired interface of the EAP610 still worked, and after some troubleshooting with TP-Link, they recommended I return it for replacement from where I purchased it. The replacement is on the way, but until that arrives I'm using an old TP-Link travel router in access point mode. Price breakdown for this upgrade was $140 for the Bytenook Mini PC, $40 for the Netgear 8 port easy manage switch, $100 for the TP-Link Omada EAP610, and $21 for the TP-Link 5 ports easy manage switch, all from Amazon. The PoE injector was provided for a review, and it seemed to work with the Omada alright. Keeping the system small and on the bookshelf is important, because it's all being packed up soon. 
Yes, I'm moving from Alaska by the end of the year and will be carrying this network gear in my luggage so I can set it up with my family. Here, this is just the lab, but there it has to work. I've opted for the mini PC because when the household stuff is packed up, I may not see it for a few months. I'm already starting to pack and it's great to have this set up and working through the issues here. I hope to do another video after the move showing how I set it up at the new location. That is all I have to present. If you have any questions, pointers, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. So far, I think this setup will work for me if the equipment holds up. I'll post an update when I have the new Umada wireless access point in. Until next time, they call me Good Monkey, and thanks for watching. Hopefully, the video wasn't terrible.